People in Canada, as well as people in some northern states, will be familiar with these cuddly cute jays. For those who aren't familiar with these birds, I think this video will make you want to know them. Before I begin, I just want to give a shout out to a good friend of mine who has a YouTube channel called Wandering Soul Images. He was kind enough to allow me to use a couple of clips of the Canada Jay he has in British Columbia, Canada, which are slightly different looking than the ones I get. Make sure to stop over and say hello. I'll leave a link in the description and in the comments pinned at the top. He has a very zen-like channel with all kinds of lovely videos. So without further ado, here are 10 facts about the Canada Jay. Enjoy! Description and Range These jays are not as widespread or common throughout North America as blue jays. Although they can be found across much of Canada, in fact in every single province and territory, they are only found in a few northern states as well as much of Alaska. Some populations, however, dwell in areas as far south as New Mexico and Arizona. Measuring roughly 25 to 30 centimeters and weighing around 60 to 80 grams, these long-tailed jays are a little smaller than the blue jay. They don't have a crest, and they have a thick covering of feathers on their nostrils, which makes the bill appear short. The head of adult birds have a striking and unique pattern of dark gray and white. Their stubby black bill, large dark eyes, and thick fluffy plumage help give the Canada Jay a soft, rounded appearance that makes them charming and pleasing looking. Juvenile birds, however, are quite different looking from their parents, so much so that it was once thought that they were a different species. Young birds are a striking, sooty black color with a pale bill that turns darker as it grows out of adolescent stage. After they finish their first molt, usually by the end of August, they lose this black color and look just like the adults. Regional Differences There are variations in its coloring in different regions, especially the amount of dark gray on the back of the head. The darkest birds are in Newfoundland and northeastern Canada. Canada jays in the Rocky Mountains are more pale overall. Birds in the Rockies from southeastern British Columbia to Arizona and New Mexico also have the least amount of black on the head, with the head appearing white due to the dark color on the head not extending toward the eyes. Birds south of Canada in the Cascades and Coast Ranges are browner. Interestingly, juvenile birds don't seem to show much difference and appear to look the same no matter the region, with perhaps the exception of some having a whitish strip below eyes. Okay. Habitat These jays are not likely to be seen in your backyard, unless your backyard is a cabin or cottage in the woods. They are strictly woodland birds that are found in the boreal regions from the tree limit in the far north through the foothills and mountains. They can be found in coniferous and mixed forests, bogs, fens, picnic and campsites across Canada and northern United States. They prefer evergreen, especially spruce and mixed evergreen deciduous forests. Mated pairs occupy territories of about 65 to 70 hectares. Diet and foraging habits. These birds aren't very picky, however they don't eat the seeds of coniferous trees found throughout their entire range. Instead, these guys eat berries, mushrooms, insects and spiders, eggs and nestlings of other birds, and even small animals like mice or shrews. Their way of finding food as a pair or family group is to slowly move through the forest, stopping frequently on mid-level perches to scan the forest floor and surrounding trees. Not much is missed by their sharp eyes. In fact, anything that has died recently is usually found within a few hours at most. It's not uncommon to see them picking at a carcass. They are also ready to take advantage of any sudden opportunity that may come its way. They will snap up flying insects just like a flycatcher, or pounce on a mouse or shrew that dares to venture out into the open. 
Canada Jays are known to seek out people too. Hikers, campers, skiers, anyone that comes into their woods is likely to be paid a visit by these opportunists in the hopes of getting some food. They also learn to take advantage of game that has been shot or trapped by hunters. Canada Jays, like birds of prey, cough up or cast a pellet. This is the mass of undigested parts of a bird's food that some bird species occasionally regurgitate. For Canada Jays, a pellet can measure around 13 by 33 millimeters. Scientists can use these to find out what the bird ate. Peanut the Canada Jay was generous enough, I guess, to cough one up into my hand a couple of years ago. Food Storing Characteristics Canada Jays rely heavily on cash food to survive the otherwise foodless winters. That means in autumn and fall, they get busy making up caches of just about anything they can find. Each food item is worked back and forth into their mouths until their sticky saliva has coated the morsel. Then they will take the morsel and stick it under some lichen or bark of trees for later use. They have been observed making a thousand caches in one summer day. So by winter, these caches can accumulate into the tens of thousands, which are all spread throughout their vast territory. A smart thing to do because if they were to hide all their caches in one spot and another animal was to come by and find it, well, they will have risked losing all of their food. So it's smart to spread each item throughout the territory. Nesting Male Canada Jays are the ones who choose the nest site which is typically in a dense conifer close to the trunk at the base of a branch. Often pretty low, only around 15 feet above the ground. More often than not, he chooses the south facing side taking advantage of the extra warmth from sunlight. Male and females build the nest, but at the beginning the male does most of the work. The nest is a bulky, flat cup of twigs, lichens, strips of bark, and caterpillar webs lined with softer materials including animal hair and feathers. The birds press their body down inside to mold it into shape. No other passerine in Canada nests as early as the Canada jay. By January, a pair is already busy spotting a place to build a nest, and if all goes well, females will lay eggs as early as late February. Nesting while there are still snowstorms brewing is a testament to just how hardy these birds are. And while nesting in the middle of winter may seem ludicrous, these jays are not only smart and very tough, but also quite prepared. All that food I mentioned earlier that they hoard away in summer and fall doesn't only help sustain them through the barren winter, but also helps them to be able to feed their nestlings when there is still much snow around. Nesting this early also gives the babies most of the year to learn to forage and store food for their first winter. Having babies raised and out of the nest by April also gives the pair a lot of time to prepare for winter. Have many names. Whiskey Jack, Camp Robber, Meat Bird, Meat Hawk, Moose Bird, Gray Jay, Canada Jay, you get the drift. These guys have many different names. I don't know of any other bird that has so many. For a long time, since the late 1950s, these sweet-faced birds were known as Gray Jays, a name that had been adopted as the official name of the species in 1957, with the publication of the American Ornithologist Union's fifth checklist. As of 2018, though, the name has been changed back to what it initially was known as from 1831 to 1957, Canada Jay. A much more appropriate name given that these birds live in Canada with a few exceptions of a few northern states. They also don't migrate, so they really are Jays of Canada. As for the other names, well, Camp Robber comes from the fact that Canada Jays are not shy about robbing campsites, stealing whatever food is left unattended. Meat bird, or meat hawk, comes from how these jays often eat carrion, and as I mentioned already, they will kill smaller animals such as shrews and even small birds like chickadees or warblers, kind of like hawks. Moose bird nickname came about due to them perching on moose to feed on engorged ticks. And last but not least, whiskey jack, which comes from the Cree and Algonquin languages, and since I couldn't find anything on the internet to help me pronounce them, 
I'm not even going to try for fear of outright butchering it. So here are the spelling of the names instead. This name is actually a lot older than the Canada J name, dating back to, I think, 1772. It's quite an appropriate name for these J's, too, because it means a benevolent trickster and cultural hero. And for anyone who knows Canada J's, that is all too fitting for them. Longest held bird study in the world. Since the 1960s, researchers in Algonquin Provincial Park, Ontario, Canada, have been monitoring Canada Jays. It's the longest running bird study in the world. Continuing a 55 year old tradition, a dedicated team of researchers monitor breeding pairs as they build nests and raise their young. The group is made up of volunteers and graduate students. The late Russell J. Rudder, a well known Ontario naturalist, was the one who started the study. He was interested in the jays and wanted to learn more about them. Not much was known about these birds at the time, but that was about to change. To know who was who, helping to better monitor them, he used a new technique at the time, color banding, to identify individual Canada jays. Every jay was given a unique combination of colored plastic and standard aluminum bands and released. From then on, a J could be recognized as an individual and given a name, according to its band combination. Russell was the first to determine that these birds lived on permanent territories, that they lived for a very long time, and that they tended to nest in the same general area year after year. Later, the Algonquin Canada J study was taken over by Dan Strickland. Since the early 1980s, Dan and volunteer helpers have been finding nests each year, banding the young, and following successful adults as well as young birds. Since Dan's retirement in 2000, he has been able to devote even more time to the study, now one of the longest-running studies of a marked population of vertebrates anywhere in the world. In partnership with Dr. Ryan Norris of the University of Guelph, the study of Canada jays in Algonquin has led to new and valuable insights into their ecology and behavior. Pretty awesome stuff. Oldest Canada Jay Canada Jays are resident birds of the Canadian boreal forest in a few northern states as I've already mentioned, and they don't migrate. Due to the fact that most of these Jays stay at home, not having to endure the arduous flight south, they can live really long lives. Sure, they may have to tough out what the harsh Canadian winter has to offer, but these are Canada Jays, hardy, smart birds. A Canadian winter is nothing to them. Remarkably, these guys have an average lifespan of 8 years, with many territory-owning individuals reaching age 15 and 16 years. They often live a very long time for such a small bird. In fact, the oldest Canada Jay on record was at least 17 years and 2 months old. Banded in 1985, it was recaptured and re-released by a bird bander in Colorado in 2002. I haven't been able to find any longevity records from Algonquin research, but I imagine that Dan Strickland and his students must have known a few that lived close to that. A member of the Corvidae family. Canada jays are a member of the Corvidae family of birds. This is a family that includes other jays, crows, magpies, and ravens, to name a few. It's a highly intelligent group of birds known for their adaptability to the presence of humans in their environment. They are quite boisterous, persistent, and full of personality. Canada jays, as well as the others, apparently have the same brain-to-body ratio as dolphins and chimpanzees. Just one look into those eyes and you can see intelligence at play. So there you have it, 10 fun facts about the cute and friendly Canada jay. For those not lucky enough to have these characters close to you, it may be worth taking a trip over winter to a place they are known to hang out. I promise if you ever do, you won't regret it. These jays know how to have a party. I hope you enjoyed learning about our lovely little jay. What fact did you enjoy the most? Comment below and let me know, and as always, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I just want to say thank you to Laszlo from Wandering Soul Images for helping me out by providing a few Canada J videos. It was a big help. If you would like, go on over and check out his lovely channel. Take care. Happy birding.